OM System OM1 is a great video camera. In this video I'm going to go through some of the new things that they put into this camera and also some of my settings that I use when I shoot video. Hi, it's Peter here. Let's get right into the business. Let's first look into the menu. Video settings can be found in the dedicated video menu. And the button settings can be found in operations menu. But we'll get into that a bit later. The first page has basic settings and image quality. The first one is the codec. H.265 is a new codec in OM system Olympus cameras. The other option is H.264. Which one should you use? If you are planning on editing your videos and you have a, a bit harder lighting conditions, darker shadows and, and bright highlights, use 265. It's a better codec. It's a 10-bit codec. But if you're doing casual travel videos or casual YouTube videos, H.264 is fine. I use H.265 10-bit 25 frames per second. I have found that to be the best. There's more to uh, or more room to edit. For example, on this one when I have quite bright background and my face is lit with a LED light here, the contrast is a bit bigger than normal. Nothing major, but H.265 is a lot better codec because it's 10 bits. And now I have a codec H.265 10 bit. Now let's compare it to 264. And now we have 264. And the next option is image quality. And here I show what I've set here for these four different options. Then you can choose the default exposure mode. I always use manual when I'm doing video. I don't want the exposure to change randomly when I'm using uh, or when I'm filming because I want the exposure to be consistent. If there is a need to change the exposure, I will use a varial ND filter like I always do, but I will adjust that instead of aperture or shutter speed. Flicker scan is needed if you have a lot of flickering lights in the scene. Sometimes when you're doing something indoors in a location, you can see that the background LEDs or these um, artificial light tubes or whatever, artificial light tubes, but these, you know, light tubes, they might flicker and then you might want to use this and it will fix that problem because it's not that hard to fix in post, but it's extra work, which I, in most cases, don't want to do. So sometimes I need to use this flicker scan, but of course the default setting is it's turned off. Then you have the option to use digital teleconverter and that's quite handy tool in video because it doesn't really affect the image quality, but you get extra reach for your lens if you need it. And it's one thing that you can set to a button so that you can press the button and it will, you know, use the digital teleconverter. It's quite handy if you, you know, really need to do use only one lens and want some more reach. And here you can see a crop line when you have it set to a button. Then when you press it, you can do it actually when you're recording. It will crop the image like that. The next page is about picture modes and white balance. You have four different picture mode settings and what's available it depends on your codec. If you use H.264, you have three options. You have the option to choose the same picture mode that your uh, still mode is using when you're taking photographs, or you can choose flat mode and OM log. And if you have the first option, you can also use art filters. I very seldom use them, but they might be a good way to grade your image if you want to have some special look and feel of your image of your video. So yeah, try those if you feel that they are something that you want to use. I personally am not a big fan of art modes in general, but they might be handy if you don't want to, you know, do a lot of color grading to your footage. If you use H.265, you have two options, OM log or HLG. And OM log is the log for OM system cameras and Olympus cameras and that's what I mainly use. It's quite flat, not as flat as many other log formats, but it's something that there will be more room to grade and like I said in a situation like this it's it's quite handy to have more room to edit the or color or edit the color. And here we have ungraded footage straight from the camera 4K 25p 10-bit OM log 400. And this one is 
when it's graded. As you can see, it's not that flat, but it's better than the normal picture modes, which are not as good for grading as OMLog 400 is. And HLG is a kind of a HDR mode in video. I haven't never used it and I haven't even tested it on my camera, but that's something that of course I will test and see if that's something that I can benefit from. But for now I'm using OMLog 400. And the base ISO for that is ISO 400. And the frame rate I choose depending on what I'm shooting. If there's a lot of movement, I might use the 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second, it depends. And then when I'm shooting like this, it's 25 frames per second. I have left view assist off. The view assist is so that if I'm using OM log, it will show Rec 709 on the screen. But I'm used to using OM log on my screen because I know how to make the exposure when I'm using that. I'm kind of, uh, you know, used to that. And I always use manual white balance when I'm shooting video. I don't want the white balance to change because that's a pain to fix. And if you want a bit warmer base tone on your white balance, you can have the keep warm colors on. I've turned it off and if I want to be or, or want to have a bit warmer color in my video, I will do it in post and adjust it the way I want it to. And page three, I leave it as it is. Page four has settings for IBIS. You can turn it off and then there are two settings for IBIS, ES1 and ES2. And ES1 uses both digital and sensor shift and MS2 only sensor shift. When I'm using tripod, like now, it's turned off. But if I'm using handheld, I'm using the position one. I found that to be a bit better. But when you're using MS1, there is a slight crop in the image. So the crop factor is roughly 2.2. Page 5 has everything about audio and HDMI. I have set the recording value to minus 7 and then I will adjust the sound from the microphones that I'm using. It's a lot easier to turn off or turn as low as possible from the camera so that there won't be any hiss from the preamps. And volume limiter, I have turned it on. The rest are like this. Plug-in power is good to have on. Then if I have a microphone that needs power it can be powered from the 3.5 millimeter microphone plug. And that's, that's good. That's why I have it on. HDMI output mode, I usually have it on record. Then I don't have any information recorded or baked into the image. If I have it on monitor, it will record every, every you know, info that is on the screen. So that's why I have it on record. If I need to use only a monitor, then I will turn this to monitor, then I can see all the parameters in the monitor. So in that way, it's a lot easier to see. And, and when I'm shooting for clients, I usually use a bigger monitor on my screen or on my camera because the, the little screen, you can't really tell that the image is sharp for sure. It's easier to look when you have a bigger monitor. And page six have shooting assists. I have the center marker on. Zebra patterns are a real help. I'm so glad they finally added this. There are two different levels for zebras. Level 1 is set to 80 and level 2 is 100. If there are lines going to the right, I need to lower the exposure. Level 1 shows me if the skin tones are overexposed. Then I have the rec frame on, which is really handy when I can, I can really see that it's recording because the, there's a red frame around the LCD or the image. That helps a lot to see that I do have the recording on because it has happened when I'm doing videos. I've been talking 15 minutes and realized that I never recorded. That happens if you're outdoors and the camera is a bit further away. And you can't really, really see the small rec marking on the screen. So the frame is really good. And like I said in the beginning that from operations and functions, you can set the buttons and you can set the buttons for video only. And of course the, the still buttons are still like like they are for still photography but for video you can separately set the buttons and i've only set one and that's the iso button is turns off zebras and turn them on so i can toggle between zebras and off when i'm shooting video i can check that everything is okay nothing is overexposed and then when i start shooting i'll turn them off so they won't be interfering all in all i think om system has made a very good improvement in the video there are some things that should have been there earlier to be honest 
but the things that I really like now are the zebras, for example, which, like I said, should have been years ago there. It helps a lot, especially when I'm shooting like this myself. I can totally see that my skin and forehead is not overexposed, that I don't see any zebras on my face. Or, and I usually try to adjust it so that the zebras are just gone, so they are... So my face is around 80 or 70, maybe. That's, that's the best way. And then if it's a slightly overexposed, I can lower it in post, my skin tones. And that's, that's one of the biggest reasons. And of course, right there, that's overexposed right now when I'm filming. And let's see how, how much I can recover the highlights. It, it was, you know, over 90. So, but let's see how much I can recover that. Then, of course, the H8265 codec 10-bit is, is a big improvement. And those things have made OM1 camera a really good video camera. There are a few things that could be done a bit better. And that's, for example, there would be a great, uh, or it would be great if there was a, a possibility to choose 180 degree uh, shutter angle so that I can set it to 180. And if I'm changing the frame rate, it will always be double the frame rate, the shutter speed, I mean. Like now I'm having one fiftieth of a second because I'm shooting in 25p. And if I wanted to do 50p, then it would be one hundredth of a second. And that would go out automatically if, if I had a option to choose a 180 degree shutter. That, that would totally be great. And of course, if we had waveforms and, and all that available, that would also help. But of course, if you need those, then you can also, also use a external monitor which has those. So that's not a big problem, but it would be helpful if they had that. And what else there was? Yeah, then about storing the settings to custom modes, which is a bit tricky. And I'm not going to go into that because Rob Trek has made a very good video about that. So if you want to get deep dive into how to set the custom modes for video or store them and what you can store and how it works, watch that Rob Trek's video. It's a great video. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.